Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. We then had a segment that if you told me they hired WWE's production staff to make this, I would completely believe you. This is so bad. John Moxley's walking away. I, now, hope, I hope Moxley didn't watch this later. First of all, Mox had not been seen for over an hour. So I guess he's, he, he, he crashed the show and then just hung out backstage all chummy. He just chummy. paces around angrily in the back for hours on end. Actually, I believe that. That's true. Yeah. So he's walking from the camera and you hear a disembodied voice shout, John! John! What did you mean out there? No, he actually said, what's going on out there? What did you mean by all that stuff? I see. What did you mean by all that stuff? <laughs> that was your question. <laughs> so Moxie says more cryptic stuff. There's random geeks hanging out there. Moxie says, you know what we could really use around here? And before he could answer, an unnamed woman runs in and starts throwing dudes around. To his credit, Excalibur immediately identified her as Marina Shafir. Well, when they after came back. it was done. Yes, but yes. we know. It's better I, than NXT, where I still don't know who half the people were from Wednesday. That's fair. That's fair. But I, I thought it was Marina Shafir. It was, in fact, Marina Shafir. And she got a makeover. I think she's got darker hair now. So to, to make her unrecognizable and anonymous. But she throws these guys around. And uh, Moxie says, what we need is a, a, some kind of lesson. A lesson in humility. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. And that was that. I, I love the concept of this. I do. I mean, I, I've wanted them to do something with Marina Shavir forever, so I'm really glad she's getting a push. She looked amazing. She looked incredible. Apparently, a lot of people thought it was Becky Lynch, which I thought was kind of strange. But looking at socials, people what were like, debut oh, that would have been. We want you for yeah. the last uh, the last segment of the show that falls off a cliff. Can you be there, Becky? Backstage segment? All right. <laughs> yeah, sure. I like the idea of this. I thought the execution was was kind of poor. Um, kind of poor. Who, who was the guy that was running after Mox? I couldn't recognize the voice. Was it just? A I have no idea. Just or some random? dude. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it was anyone we were supposed to know. Did I mention? I don't think I did mention this. As Marina Shafir is committing assault and throwing bodies around, they're trying to stop her by shouting. Now, what are they shouting? Yeah. Are they shouting? I mean, stop. Are they shouting? Jesus Christ, don't do that. No, they're shouting, and I quote, ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> Very polite. Sure they weren't still it's in also- London? <laughs> they may have been. They may have been. <laughs> hey, we don't call people ma'am. Only the queen gets ma'am. Well, she's dead, so, you know. Um, There's a new ma'am in town. <laughs> it was great when that guy ran in, and he just looked and went, nope, and he left. <laughs> Finally, someone with a bit of sense backstage. That's true. That's fair. I enjoyed this. I thought it, I mean, it was awful, but it was great as well. And I'm, I mean, I'm up for it. I, I can't wait to see where this goes. So. <laughs> I thought it was fun. My notes, by the way, for that last segment, the Ricochet Osprey pack thing was just pack him, Will. And <laughs> he died. <laughs> That was terrifying. That was another neck bump that looked terrifying on television. Um, the Ricochet stuff, I just want to pop back to that quickly. He um, he was pretty blown by the end. Do you think that's just nerves? He's had a really huge week. I think he was you just, know. he hadn't wrestled for a long time. He was all excited. He wanted to have an old yeah. school Ricochet match. And it's hard, dude. This ain't easy. I mean, yeah, it, I mean, this guy is not falling. I saw on social media people going, "Oh man, Ricochet's washed." It's like, no, come on. he'll be fine this next guy week. Went to London. He had to. Obviously, I guess he had to hide the whole time. You know, he you've got the jet lag as well. He goes out, has a great showing in Wembley in front of fifty thousand odd fans. Comes back and then he has to do his debut on Dynamite. I mean, that's a lot of pressure. I think we can kind of give him a pass that he was slightly off. You know, nerves blow you. I mean, that's the thing. If you've never wrestled, you don't know that. I guess that nerves blow you up very, very quickly. And this guy was just, I think it was just nerves, jet lag, whatever. I am sure Ricochet will be great in AEW. And Carl Fletcher's a star. I know we keep jobbing him out to people, but he is, you look at this guy he has everything. He has absolutely everything. And I've been watching this dude for years on the indies in the UK because he's he was over here for a long time. And he has evolved so much and he's got the body and he's got the look. I mean, he's is he six he's six three, six five legit? He's tall. Yeah. Guys, 
huge and he just looks incredible and yeah he's talking he's developing that but you know they've put him callous he's awesome uh, where's he going nowhere <laughs> hate to say that's it weird. but that's what we're at about right now it's going weird. nowhere fast is where he's going Brian Danielson comes out for the main event promo. First, talks about how great it felt after feeling, feeling, feeling all year to win the world title in front of his family and 50,000 people. Daughter said it was the greatest day of her life. It was the favorite moment of his career, and he was choked up as he was saying this. And then says some hard truths. So my kids are going to say tomorrow when I take them to the fair. The greatest day of their lives? Yeah. Actually, they, they, they might say that. Yeah. yeah. Uh... His contract is up, uh, has expired on, as of August 1st. He needs neck surgery sooner, sooner than later. His family is ready to come home. It's probably the time to go home, but not yet, he screams and everyone cheers. Promises he will not retire as champion. When he loses his belt, his full-time career will be over, but he will fight for as long as he can. Issues an open challenge for all in Chicago. And he said two weeks. Really, it's like 10 days. But then Jack Perry appears on the screen. Says nobody wanted me, wanted me back here, including you. Talking about your future, I created my own future. I punched Tony Khan. There's more than that, but anyway, I destroyed Kenny Omega. I won the TNT title. I buried Darby Allen. The only time we were in the ring together, I beat you after I had been set on fire. My future is to retire you and win the AEW title. My future is in front of me. Your future is behind you. And at that moment, he's in the ring, laying Danielson out, posing with both belts. So there you go. There's your all-out main event. Did nobody realize how stupid this was? Brian Danielson was advertised as addressing his future. So he comes out and he announces that he will not retire. And he issues an open challenge. The open challenge is accepted by a pre-tape. Because Jungle Boy ends up in the ring behind him. How did Jungle Boy know that he was going to not retire? How did Jungle Boy know he was going to issue an open challenge? How did Jungle Boy in advance tape this promo to interact with a man live in the ring as he snuck in the ring on the other side? They did this once in WWE as well, where a guy was, uh, turns out he was interacting back and forth with the pre-tape because later we found out the guy was actually in the ring. That made no sense. But Jack Perry and Brian Danielson... Facing off at All Out. Well, I know it's fake, Spartan Sprinkles. You don't have to make it more fake. Anyway. Maybe some of the wrestlers, they, they come in and they do a pre-tape just in case someone... Just in case. He had, a, he had like six of them. He recorded six of them. Yeah. yeah. One of them was in case Brian, Brian Danielson retired. <laughs> I knew you were going to retire because I beat you in that cage match. He had a, he had a couple. And he was just, which, whatever he says, hit that button. Yeah. All right, sure. He's an intelligent, intelligent man. Anyway, yeah, Brian Danielson and, and Jack Perry, yeah. which uh, I will I will give them credit. Like, when Jungle Boy first appeared on the screen, I was like, what? Jack Perry? But then when he explained everything, I was like, God damn, you're right. You did beat Tony Khan. He didn't mention this, but Brian Danielson was on the disciplinary committee. Mm. That's why he said nobody believed in me, including you. Mm. He destroyed Kenny Omega, won the TNT title, buried Darby, and the only time they ever wrestled after being set on fire, he beat him. So once he rattled off all of that, he was like the Miz with his resume, just better. I was like, God damn, he does deserve a title shot. So it was a good promo to make this seem like definitely a more exciting main event than it was when he first appeared on the big screen. I still think the, the Hangman and, and uh, Swerve should headline, though, that cage match. The segment was great. If you don't think about it too deeply. Well, I do. It works. That's the problem. I know. I, yeah, it's logic, isn't it? But the segment, if you take the segment on its own, it's fantastic. And yeah, great. You know, Jack Perry versus Brian Danielson. Fantastic. I'm up for it. But yeah, it was it was weird. I, I just used to think that they all come in and do pre-tapes. <laughs> yeah. From now on. Until told otherwise. They come in and they pre-tape in case somebody throws out an open challenge. Mm. There we go. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.